I'm Rick Anderson. I'm familiar with the, uh, with the Mississippi Delta because I grew up in Clarksdale, which is just about 35 miles away from here. And I went to Delta State, and I've painted all my life. I really enjoyed working with the arts. And after I graduated from Delta State, I was fortunate enough to get my first teaching job here in Greenville, Mississippi at Coleman Junior High School. And it's the, if you haven't been to the Mississippi Delta, there's just something about the Mississippi Delta. And as you look around the room and look at th through the different galleries, you'll see a lot of my work has been influenced by the Mississippi Delta. The nice flat lands, the rolling fields, and the plowed fields, and the trees that sort of line these fields that breaks up the space. But a lot of my work, although it is realism, there is a design element to it. And so I put realistic elements as well as non-realistic elements in my work. And a lot of times I may start at one place and it ends up totally somewhere else. But what I like about painting the, the Delta is the peacefulness, the softness. But as I travel, whether it's throughout the United States or in Europe, I'm always paying attention to what the landscape is and what things look like. So I will go back home. I take a lot of photographs for reference, but I don't paint on the spot. So when I do get home in my, in my gallery or my studio, I really take those images and I, I think about where we've been and I think about what I want to do to, in, to interpret some of the places I've been to. The reason I'm here in this gallery with this opportunity is because of Ellen, Eleanor Wright, the executive director of the Greenville Arts Council. Uh, I got an email and she said, Rick, would you like to exhibit here? And I said, of course, because I do know the space. I've had an exhibit here before. And it is a lot of space and it does require a lot of work. Thank goodness Eleanor contacted me over a year ago because you just don't create 70 paintings in a week or two. It just does take a, lot, a long time. And when I do create the work for different shows, I just do what I do. I paint, I create, and then I have to decide which pieces I want to bring here and which pieces I, I, I want to leave at home. Um, but as you look around the gallery, you'll not only see landscapes that are I call contemporary landscapes, realism with abstract work, I also do sometimes totally, completely abstract pieces of work. And some of these are large, uh, some up to 72 inches by six by 48 inches, and, and even larger in some cases if there's a commission that requires that. But the name of the show is basically up close and far away. When a viewer comes in to, to look at the work, at a distance they may see one thing, shapes and design, elements and principles of art, color here and there. But then as the viewer goes a little bit closer, into the painting, they look very deep, very closely and they see all the details, more than just the flat surface or the pure color that you see from a distance. So viewers discover things within the paintings as they do get closer and it, and it does make them look into the work. And you know, a lot of times the abstract work, there's not anything but contemporary work, elements and principles of design. Sometimes people who are not familiar with contemporary work will say, what's that mean? And my response is, it means whatever you see in the work. Um, and sometimes people will say, well, Rick, how long does it take you to do that piece of work here? And my answer is, you know, I don't, I don't count the time. I just start working. And a lot of times, I count the time that I'm just looking at the piece of work and not actually painting on it. Because every time I do something with a piece of artwork, it leads to something else. If I put color here, I may need to put color here. If I put a certain piece of shape here, I may need to balance that out somewhere else. So actually, as long as I'm working on the, that particular piece of work, it sort of guides me to how I need to do from one thing to another. And as we talk today, I want to pick out two or three or four pieces of work and just talk a little bit about them and let the audience know how I started and how I, how I ended up 
saying, well, I'm done with this piece of work. Right now, I would like to focus on this piece that's called dynamics. It's a diptych, which means it's two pieces in one. This piece here is 48 by 60, and this piece is 30 inches by 60. And with a diptych stacked this way, there is a space in between, but the painting continues from the bottom all the way up to the top. But if you look closely, as I was talking earlier, when you get real close and you start seeing little things that take place inside the piece of artwork, which is different when you back up. If you notice at the top here, there's the sun. It's just a sphere that, that I think with the light of the, of that sun, it draws your attention upward. So this area here has a lot of work that are, that's taking place, a lot of movement, a lot of push and pull back and forth, lights, light areas and dark areas. But when you do get up close, you see that I've applied different pieces of, of materials onto the canvas. But when you back up from it and see it from a distance, you see very strong movement. And that's the reason I call it dynamic. So it does, it does have a dynamic feel to it. Now this piece was a potential commission for a business and I gave them the option of two this same size. They selected the other, but the good thing is when they don't select one, I get to have it for shows and, and for galleries. So there's never work that is, that I do that is, that wastes time. Everything can be used in a show or just for personal viewing. And a lot of times, when I say personal viewing, a lot of times uh, my wife Mary will say, even before it goes out, she'll say, I think we need to keep this piece in our own collection. And that's a good thing because by doing that, I have a, a record of work that, that has spanned over many, many, many years. And I think I've been painting about six decades now. Okay, younger doesn't count, but I've always liked art. And the good thing about working on this work or a realistic piece of work, I love what I do. It's never tiring. I remember a student at South Natchez High School once said, Mr. Anderson, you make us work. Who makes you work? And my answer was, that's an excellent question. And the good thing is, nobody makes me work. It's inside here. And every time I have a new piece of paper or a new canvas, it's like brand new all over again. So I love doing what I do. I'm so fortunate that I can do this. But if you come to the show or even when you see it online, try to zoom in if you can and pick out some of these details and these fine little points that are that you can find maybe very, very interesting when you see it up close. This particular piece of work is called Big Oak. And as I spoke early about realism and abstract work to, uh, combined, if you notice here, I did a uh, pencil drawing, ebony pencil, a lot of carbon, to, on, actually on paper, on Bristol board. And I was able to create the feel of trees and also the land from here with the light space that takes your eye further. And as you go back, in this small space, the viewer's eye can just go from foreground up here all the way back to the horizon line. Now, if you look at this part of the painting, this is more realistic, this is more abstract. Patterns, different colors, where this is more neutral with a little hint of color. This has softer yellows and softer blues, and it looks like it's wet. It looks like the rain may have come and the water is running down throughout the field. Many of my paintings do have the same feel and, and I think it causes a lot of, creates a lot of interest. And then as I, after it dries, I go back with colors and I paint in and I paint out. I add colors, I back away. I think, what do I need to add to this or not? And then at a point, I just say, that's it. I need to sign it. This particular painting uh, is called Bridge Over the Tiber. Several years ago, when my wife and I were in Italy, we were actually in a town called Umberta de Italy, and there was the Tiber River runs through that town. And of course, having my camera and taking a lot of photographs for reference for later on, so that's why I created this particular piece of work. Although it looks contemporary and abstract, 
it's a, it's a result of my experience actually that day when I was looking at, at the Tiber River and the bridge. So the bridge over the Tiber, if you notice this, these shapes, that's actually how the bridge looked and the water running through and this glitter down here, this gold looking, uh, these shapes, the gold shapes coming downward, that's uh, uh, representing the sun as it was shining on the river and it was just glistening over the top of the river. So uh, with the water flowing, with the sun, with the bridge, that's, that's my interpretation of what I saw that day, bridge over the Tiber. Let me talk a minute about this particular piece called Moody Blue. It's two-dimensional mixed media, a lot of layering, a lot of torn paper, a lot of canvas that I've applied, uh, and, and that, that's all a part of the overall design. When I start, I lay in just basic shapes, basic colors, and as the painting dries, I study it and I look and figure out what I need to, to do to add more to it. So moody blue, basically blues and whites, with different geometric shapes included in it. But as you get closer, as I was speaking earlier, far away and then up close, one can see all these little bitty small sp items that have been applied. These are little squares, but they're just not randomly placed. A lot of times I'll put one I'll have others ready. As I put another and another, the piece of work and the design guides me to where I need to place others. There have been times where I've put something on a, on a, pa a, a painting and I look at it and it just doesn't work. So I have to, I remove it. Every decision that I do, that I make, creates the opportunity for other decisions. So Moody Blue, gives the, just the feeling of a lot of things taking place, a lot of shapes, a lot of movement, and then I paint out and paint over things, which actually helps the painting blend and work very well together. So Moody Blue is actually the result of starting from nothing, letting the, the painting guide me, and then I finally say, I'm, I'm done, I need to sign it. This particular piece here I call swim. If you look at it up closely, you see a lot of movement. And I didn't have the title before I started. I created the title after I finished. Now, if you look at this particular piece of work called swim, there were actually at least four or five paintings behind it. And by that, what I mean is it evolves. A lot of times I'll work on something, I'll let it sit for a day or two. And then I'll think about it. A lot of the times working on a piece of work is actually not working on the piece of work. It's setting it aside, looking at it, studying it, and then I decide I see things in it that I need to, to add. And I do that process and I actually add more to it. This painting is a really a mixed media piece. It has Prismacolor pencil. It has uh, things that I've applied. There's some lines that I put in afterwards, uh, pencil, anything that I want to apply to it that makes the piece of work work. So swim, I finally was very pleased with it after, like I said, four or five paintings below it. I want to talk a few minutes about this particular piece called Midnight Moon. How many times have we gone outside at night and there's this beautiful moon that's here? But if you look closely, this piece of work is two-dimensional mixed media. It has a lot of different things involved in it. We, I have uh, gold leaf, applied different geometric shapes on top. And if you look closely, or if you get up close to it, these are little small wooden dowels that are just randomly put on the surface just to create texture, along with actual stitching on the canvas from the front to the back, making X's throughout. Everything that I do on the piece meant helps for the final result of the piece. So although it looks simple, you get up close, it's very complicated, you discover things, and it's called Midnight Moon. This piece of work is two-dimensional mixed media. It's called Soft Trees Landscape. Now if you view this piece for about 10 or 15 feet away, 
All you see are geometric shapes, but as the viewer comes in closer, one can see a lot of textures, a lot of canvas applied on top of canvas, and very subtly, right in this area here, I have the feeling of lines that create trees. So that's why I call it soft tree landscape. Lights and darks, neutral colors, and overall, I want it to give a nice pattern, a nice look, and a nice strong feel. So soft trees landscape, two-dimensional mixed media. This work is called Resistance 1 and 2. It's, um, it's a design piece. As you see, it's a lot of movement that takes place. This was a commission possibility for a sports clinic, and that's why I call it Resistance 1 and 2, um, where actually when, with sports clinic, they work with muscles and all of that to try to get the body back in the shape it was. Well, Resistance 1 and 2 gives that feeling of movement and tension that, a, that your body might go through when there's a problem, and then it's all worked out and made things a, a whole again. So this is resistance one and two. I really can't think of a better way to end this than with this triptych called All That Jazz. Especially with what's happening th these days, we do need a lot of All That Jazz taking place. This triptych actually began as a two-piece or a diptych. Uh, if you notice, one panel flows into the other panel. The original diptych was this panel and this panel. Bright colors, all these nice primary colors and warm, hot, hot colors, actually. But for all that jazz, gives the feeling of movement and happiness. After I had finished these two panels, a little bit later on, I went, you know what, I may want to add a third panel. So I actually created this probably several months later. But I had to make sure that it flowed, the colors matched. And so that was a process in itself. But in this two-dimensional mixed media, I have torn canvases, I have geometric shapes, I have paper here and torn paper here, nice canvas, little thin pieces here, and the, and the circles that just penetrate through all, throughout all three panels. Arc shapes here that are applied, little squares, you know, far away and close up. You can really appreciate this from a distance and up close, because when you do get up close, you can discover all those different little shapes that makes the whole piece work collectively. Once again, I want to thank Eleanor Wright and the Greenville Arts Council for giving me this opportunity. I would also like to let the public know that I'm represented um, in Vicksburg by Leslie Silver of the Attic Gallery, Kim Karen in Tupelo of the Karen Gallery, and my good dear friend, Jean Whitehead, who is my art consultant. Thank you again for viewing this, and I hope you enjoy it, and I hope you have the opportunity to come in person to see the show.